Something I'm very confident in is almost never is a gun guy only into guns. The vast majority of the times he will be into something else. It could be cars, could be whiskey, could be knives. And in my case, it's always been watches. So today we're gonna to be joined by a special guest to talk about the essential watches for gun guys. Here we are with Greg. Hi. Pretty cool. <laughs> this is fun. This is a fun it, Friday night. It is. Good Friday um, night in Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we're here at Geneva Seal. Super cool that these guys are letting us come in and uh, do this. Awesome people, And uh, bring cool toys that we'll bring out uh, later on yeah. top of um, feeding us and doing all kinds of cool stuff. So um, really neat. So anyway, so guys, this video is, is really like watches for gun guys. Not to just say that these watches are only for gun guys. They're whatever you want them to be, but that's kind of the... Uh, the, the genesis of the idea, if you will. So yeah. um, so we basically met, so you went on, on Teddy Baldazar's channel. Yeah. Um, and that's like my favorite YouTube channel. Oh, um, he's, Teddy's amazing. Teddy's he's great, uh, yeah. Outstanding content, yeah. um, just like it, one of my favorites. You you went on, and it was a great episode. It was funny, mm -hmm. like, small world of the internet. I think I sent you a DM, and I was just yeah. like, hey, man, you know, it was an amazing episode. Just wanted to say thanks for going on and doing that. And we just yeah. kind of stayed in touch, and then mm -hmm. our trip here was coming to Chicago, and yeah. I'm like, Man, we gotta we, like we, we gotta do something, you know. Yeah, like, no, it was great, and, and I was glad because when you reached out about that, I was like, man, this is gonna be perfect. And when you told me kind of what you wanted to do, I'm like, I can I can help make that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why don't you give um, background to the extent uh, you you care to share, just sure. to kind of create a little context? Yeah. So um, I I'm actually a federal agent. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing that for 19 years. Absolutely love it. Uh, it's been great. So I've been in law enforcement that long. Um, prior to law enforcement, though, uh, I, I, I'd done different things. I was actually a lead vocalist in a heavy metal band for a while, uh, did that, but I was always a gun guy. Mm -hmm. And I was going to shooting schools. Like my spring break in college, you know, everybody's going to Daytona Beach and everything. I went yeah. to Mid South. Okay. <laughs> I went to Mid South to go training for yeah, a week. Yeah. That was my spring break. Yeah. I mean, so. Um, and again, that was prior to law enforcement or any of that stuff. So yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've always been a shooter. Um, got into that, like I said, a long time ago. I did a little competition too, did some IDPA, IPSC, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just some fun. I, I had some fun. Uh, and some of the guys that I had been shooting with were in law enforcement. So it was really great to, you know, connect with them and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of my background. And then, so how did the watch thing start off? Well, ever since I was a kid, I've always loved watches. And I, I just, I don't know, there was just something about, you, you see a man, you know, as a young boy growing up, mm -hmm. you see a man, like your dad, your uncle, whatever, they always had a watch on their wrist. Yeah, now yeah. granted, I was raised in the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. And seeing people with a watch on their wrist, and to me it was like, that, that's a true gentleman, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what you're seeing as a true gentleman with that. And that was very important to me. And watching a lot of movies back then too, uh, movies that I know you're very familiar with. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. Like uh, you got people like Sylvester Stallone and uh, sure. uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. You know, Commando, Rambo, yeah, and the Bond movies. The Bond movies, the obviously the Bond movies. But all those guys always had a watch on their it's wrist. It's a hallmark. Yeah. It is. It's a hallmark, and and they had different types of watches. Yeah. And so to me, it was always like something that you had to have mm -hmm. you know a gentleman a real man he yeah. had to have something on his wrist to be able to tell the time and again back then every a lot of people had watches nowadays it's changed quite a bit because technology. now there's the, all that technology yeah. which is great and they do some awesome technology sure. you know but the eye watch or you know some of these garments and things like that they can do all kinds of great stuff your heartbeat um you know navigation all kinds of things it, it's cool stuff but I still like the old school mechanical watches. I still have some quartz, but I, I like the mechanical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what was your first piece? Uh, so the first piece I actually had that, that I can remember was a G-Shock. Now this isn't the one, yeah. but um, this is a G-Shock that I, I wish I still had my original G-Shock. I'm mad at myself, but it looked very similar to this one. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, it was like, that was the quintessential 
watch to have because they were so durable. Yeah. And I remember yeah. seeing the old commercials back when I was a kid where they had a sumo wrestler, actually two sumo wrestlers. One of them had a G-Shock on his belly and they'd come smashing into each other and that was like their commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh my God, this is insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, real tough watch. Um, and so G-Shock was really my first. Yeah. And so we're going to spend a lot of time getting into watches and, and we're going to just do kind of a wild card thing we came up with. We're going to do some gun and watch pairings like in that. a bit um, with some cool 1911s, 2011s, and then one total wild card gun that no one's going to be like, where the hell did that thing come from? Um, but I, I think we'll give people a little bit of context in terms of like, hey, this is this is not a watch channel. This is frankly right. more of a personal passion video for me than, than you know, it might be three people that watch this. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, okay. Um, I know that gun guys a lot of times are also watch guys because we tend to be into multiple things. Watch um, guys, car guys, you said whiskey, yeah, whiskey guys, 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 some people, guys, cigar you know. guys, whatever the case may be. But so may, maybe we'll speak in um, kind of at like a 30,000 foot view for a second sure. in terms of <clears throat> Okay, before we start going, okay, here's a you know a, a you know a Batman or whatever. People are like, right. hey, what, what the hell are we talking about right, right now? Sure. I don't know. It's it's almost like hey, kind of open ended, but it's like hey, there, there's a lot of different ways to think about watches and either watch collecting or sure. being a, a one and done collector yeah. or you know, for me, oftentimes I think about things in terms of complications, right? Of, of like, hey, who are you? Mm -hmm. What is it that you like? What is your lifestyle? Yes. You know, it's it's like yeah. I, I think so much. Base your watch choices around what your lifestyle is. I, I don't have a sophisticated, uh, dressed up suit, office tie, sure. you know, kind of guy. So yeah. I'm a tool watch guy. Yeah, like, like that's absolutely. what I'm drawn to. I like stuff that's kind of hard to use or mm -hmm. like historically interesting. And stuff let's talk like that. about that for a second. Yeah. Though, when we were talking about 30,000 foot view, right? What's a tool watch? Sure. So some of the, some of your viewers might be like, well, what do you mean by tool watch? Right, 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 right. yeah. And I mean, I, I would think it's a definite, you're using it as a tool, just like a gun yeah. can be a tool, a handgun, a rifle, whatever the case may yeah. be, a tool watch. And back in even, you know, when when people started putting watches on their wrists, you know, uh, kind of turn of the century into World War II and things like that, it was what? I mean, they, they had to synchronize time yeah. for m maybe an operation or something like that. So it was a hard use, mm -hmm. rugged piece of equipment sure. that someone needed to have, yeah. right? So when we think of a tool watch, we think of something not necessarily like just pretty or, or good looking or whatever, or you know, shiny. It, Something that's purpose driven. Purpose, dri purpose driven, exactly. Yeah, well, you know, and, and you may go, um, you know, if we were gonna go into, you know, military world, you go, mm -hmm. okay, uh, is there water involved in what you do? <laughs> okay, right. cool. A tool watch could be a dive watch, right? right? You, you might go, uh, I'm a pilot. Mm -hmm. I'm not really worried about going to the water. If I'm in the water, <laughs> something really went south. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, like, it's a bad good. day. In which case you go, okay, cool. Being able to time things quickly, you know, maybe a chronograph 100%. is something yes. that, that, that I need. Or, um, you, you know, again, if you're a pilot or a, a traveler, often mm -hmm. you might go, man, a GMT really makes a lot of sense to me. It tells two time zones. Yeah, two you know, time it's zones, like, dual time, yep. So the only message is we're going to kind of nerd out on watches here, but it's like, don't one don't take any of it as uh if you don't have this you're not a watch guy or you need to go out and spend 10 grand on this this yada 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 it's like exactly. it, it doesn't matter man nope. it's it's like start the journey if it intrigues exactly. you it's like just start the journey man you're probably gonna buy a bunch of wrong stuff at first i know i have yeah and i've sold more stuff than i probably bought you know just because <laughs> you're like well that was a mistake yeah but it's like just have fun with it you know yeah yeah exactly no i agree with you and that's the thing you know some people think you know watch guys are snobs and things like that and you know i've been in this world for a really long time and I've met some of the coolest people on the planet in the watch world. Yep. And, and we're talking guys that collect anything from a $100 G-Shock to a, literally a million dollar FP Journe, yep. which is way over the top with stuff. But, yeah. and some of these people are, are the nicest people in the world. And a lot of them are gun guys and oh, car guys yeah. and oh. everything else. And some are not, you know, um, which is fine. But you see guys that collect things, right? Guys that collect guns, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a watch collector. Now, my gun collection is kind of more on the side of purpose-driven tools. Yeah. I don't yeah. have that many, like, uh, safe queens, as yeah. some of my friends used to say. Well, Everything I have, I use. Yeah, right? it, it, but it also has to do with your profession, right? It's yeah. like, hey, you're in a... Uh, 
tool type environment, 100%. if you will, you yeah. know, where it's like, oh, I need my things for specific, specific purposes, you 100%. know, versus like watches. Hey, I get a little crazy, you know, yes, this is exactly. me, this is me yeah. having fun. I, I get crazy in my watch collection because that's me having fun. <laughs> All right. So with that said, uh, yeah. we'll pause for a sec and then we'll start jumping into some watches. Guys, uh, sponsor of today's video would be Sagara Gear. Uh, they make all the belts that we rock. I currently have on the light inner Velcro belt. That's my EDC. Um, they also make the emissary, lots of stuff for your vehicle, mag pouches, battle wagons, all kinds of cool stuff. They've been a sponsor of the channel for a long time. You guys can use code 1911 syndicate. That'll save you 10% off the store. Really appreciate their support. Let's start talking about watches. All right, let's start in the, so we're just gonna kind of break this by categories because we wanna to try to make it this somewhat digestible for everyone so that you go sure. like, okay, cool. I'm kind of tracking with what you guys are saying if you're not already into watches. Um, so why don't we kind of dabble in this world of like digital, um, you know, or even quartz sure. sort of, you know, like yeah. the technical stuff. Okay, sure. So what do you got? I mean, we got all kinds of stuff. Okay, going yeah. Um, now, I mean, one of the first ones that come to mind, a lot of guys, uh, a lot of gun guys I know have them are like the Garmin's, the Suntos, yeah. the G-Shocks, which are great. And yeah. I, do, I mean, I've got like my base G-Shock, but in terms of uh, that sort of thing, one of the one of the first, you know, one, one of my first luxury pieces, if you will, is a Breitling B1. Yeah. And this is I great because it. it has several different time zones. You've got UTC time as well. So, and you have different alarms mm -hmm. uh, you have with it. Um, and it's an analog and digital watch. Yeah. I, I love it. It's I mean, awesome. It was my first Breitling. Um, and, you know, sketchy guys wear Breitlings, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I might be a little sketchy, so it fit perfect. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, watches of Espionage is um, a great page for you guys to follow. Oh, like, yeah. If you, if you like this kind of stuff and, like, historically interesting watches for certain people in the military or dictators or whatever it is, like, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic page. But he says, yeah, sketchy dudes wear Breitlings. Yeah. Um, it's a great piece. I love these. Um, yeah. For people that don't know, so, I mean, really, uh, this is a, a quartz watch. Yeah, it's, it's a quartz watch. Essentially, it's a luxury quartz watch. Exactly. In many ways. Exactly. Yeah, and, and Breitling actually designed something called the Super Quartz, which was the most accurate quartz yeah. movement at, at the time. Yeah. Um, when I originally got that, it was right before the Super Quartz came out, but then when I had it serviced, they put a Super Quartz in it. Oh, cool. So they actually designated on the back of the case the SQ to show that they put in the Super Quartz movement. Very cool. cool yeah, so pieces. that's that's great. But let's talk about something else. So, yeah. I mean, this, this, you know, a little, little bit more expensive. But how about, because I see you have one as well, uh -huh. a classic. One of my favorites. The Seiko. Yeah. The Seiko Arnie, yeah. specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, you know, like you said, I mean, we're we, we yeah. both, both rocking the same watch there. I it's, love it. It's like... It's, if you're an action movie guy, oh, yeah. that is damn near as close as you can get to a must own. Oh, is exactly. anything on here? I mean, they, they nicknamed it the Seiko Arnie because of the movie Commando. Yeah. Because he had a watch that was very similar yeah. to this in the movie. And, and Predator, by the way. Oh yeah, Predator, that's right. Yeah, that's it's right. a whole list of But awesome it's interesting, shit. the scene, and you'll see it if you watch it again, the scene where he's about to, I think like, uh, I think he's the, the plane, oh, no, yeah, the plane yeah, yeah, was yeah. going up. He's he looks, oh no, he landed. It. He just landed, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, from the uh, from the landing gear, yep, dropped yep. into that like swamp area. Yep. He takes it. It doesn't look like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. It's a different watch than what he had later on. Uh, so oh, just no a little shit. fun fact. Interesting. Yeah. Check it out again. Continuity issue. Yeah, but again, the, the Seiko Arnie, oh my gosh, I it, had to have it. it. Well, and I, and I think the, the Arnie is, is, I'm going from memory, but I think it's like basically the first analog digital hybrid watch. Um, that might be, yeah. Uh, you know, and yeah. I love that. I love that. It's, I mean, it's like and the fact that I it's still it made. I changed out the strap on mine because I didn't like the the OEM strap. Oh, okay. Um, this is a nice strap, but, though. I um, like it. Dude, there's like sixty bucks, nothing much, but it's like yeah. it just I don't know, just kind of like it. But like, That's it awesome. is a cool watch. It's a big watch. Um, yeah. And I'm not a big guy, and somehow that watch does not wear at the size that it is. I think it's right. like 46 or Yeah, 46. it looks like it would be. So, you know, again, again, basics, one-on-one stuff, you know, watches are, are measured in millimeters, right? So, mm -hmm. you, you know, they don't say, hey, this watch is one and three quarters inches, uh, you know, right. cost. Yeah. it's, it's exactly. in millimeters. And this is like a 
46, 47, I mean, which is massive, mm -hmm. but somehow the watch wears incredibly well. But yeah. like, hey, for the gun dudes out there that you're like, ah, I kind of want to dabble, get something cool, you'd be hard pressed to find something cooler than that for 500 bucks. Especially with the link to the movies, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, to, 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 you know, my, some of my childhood hero time. Oh, r r ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, do we have anything else that's dabbling in that territory? Well, um, let's see, the only other quartz um that i have or well i mean the closest thing would probably be this luminox this is actually a quartz watch um so it, it's uh not analog digital but i mean yeah, luminox yeah. makes a great watch my son actually wears this one a lot um he likes the blue and it, it's just a great piece yeah i used to have one of the you know luminox the, the, the is seal. great yeah you and they, they, they the do seal. a lot of navy seal watches they've given to the different navy seal foundations and things like that so luminox is great that i've always associated with the military when luminox first came out it was like that's what you would see. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. links to that. Well, I think almost what we're talking about, it could almost extend into <laughs> this super relatively, super relative category that, that we would label beater, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I do think there's a lot to be said for, um, you should have a beater. Oh, yeah. yeah. Something Absolutely. to knock around. You don't yeah. care what happens to it. Yeah. Um, about the, you know, so really, I mean, uh, on my end of the spectrum, oh, my yeah. Arnie's my true beater, but mm -hmm. um, yes. essentially a nice beater. So I've got this Marathon GSAR. That thing is um, awesome. And I actually found this from Teddy's. Uh, cause Did Teddy, you really? Yeah, because Teddy's covered these. Oh, oh, man. I didn't realize Teddy covered them. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. Marathon's a, a relatively small company. Relatively and they make niche. some great stuff. Yeah. It, it, and what's cool about Marathon, so I believe Canadian uh, company, is somehow Swiss tied. I'm still a little confused, but I think. I think it might be using Swiss movements Swiss or something. Movement Maybe, yeah. It's a Canadian company, but um, but hey, it is a proper dive watch, right? They're 300 meters rated, but everything is rugged from the knurling on the crown to I the serrations that. that are on the bezel there. But what's notably cool about it is it's one of the few um, modern day watches that uses tritium. So. Mm -hmm. It's just cool. Like, I, you know, I'll have this in my bed stand at night and you get up in the middle of the night, all of your super, lu super Luminova watches are pretty much died out at that yep. point. And this bad boy's just glowing and it's got the radioactive oh, yeah. symbol on it. Oh yeah. This thing is, and this thing just wants to be beaten up. Oh yeah. No, yeah. that's a great watch. And I yeah. love the, the the size of it, even though, I mean, this is what, a That's 40, a 41. Yeah. 41. Yeah. So it's not super huge, but the, the size of that bezel, that bezel you can beefy. easily yeah. rotate the bezel and use it to time things. I mean, that's why we have a rotating bezel because some people are like, well, what do you have that for? Yeah. Um, and that's to time different things. That's the whole point of having a rotating bezel. Now, uh, on dive watches, it was originally made so you know you knew how much uh, how much time you were down and yeah, then before yeah, yeah. how much air you'd have yeah, left yeah. or something like that. I'm not a diver. I can't speak to that. But I use it to wind up um, timing things. Yeah. You know, I, and then there are yeah. other watches that have the rotating bezel. That's what that is on the, on the, on the front that moves. Uh, they're used for different things as well, mm -hmm. like different time zones and stuff. Sure. So. Yeah, yeah. Cool piece, though. For, I love for, that. For yeah. a gun guy, it's a, it's a really, really cool and piece. And that beater, so the, the closest I, I'd say to that for me is my Fortis. And mm -hmm. when you talk about beater, I've beaten that shit out of this watch. Yeah. I mean, I've had this for probably 17 years, I think now. And this watch has been through everything. I wore this through SWAT school. I've worn it ice climbing, winter backpacking, sub-zero mm. ice climbing, you name it. And it is a workhorse. Yeah. It's a great watch. 42 oh, yeah. millimeter. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Beefy. 42 millimeter. Um, Value 7750, That's a which is a, yeah, which is a standard wow. uh, movement uh, that a lot of the, the Swiss watches use, uh, and it's a chronograph. Yeah. So, and I know we were, we were going to talk about chronographs. Chronograph is a stopwatch, right? Yeah. So you have a start stop button at the top, and then you have a reset at the bottom. So it's another way to time things, and it has a rotating bezel. So you could actually time two different things if you needed to, yeah. depending on what you're wanting to do. Yeah. They're cool pieces. De definitely super rugged. Um, oh yeah, I love just Fortis. just cool, cool pieces. Yeah, and this a little bit of history on this. This is actually a space watch. Oh, mean. Yeah. So if you look on the back, it has a symbol for the Russian uh, cosmonauts. 
Okay. So this was issued to the Russian cosmonauts when they went on the International Space Station. Get out of here. Yeah. It's almost uh, their version of a Speedmaster. Which is right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Omega Speedmaster, which is the first watch worn on the moon. So that's what a lot of people think about when uh, they think in terms of watches in space is the Omega Speedmaster. I mean, so, it yeah. is kind of the, uh, you know, we, we did a, a video not long ago on... Um, Five essential watches that a gun guy should. Or sorry, should, sorry. Five essential pistols that a gun guy should own. Yeah, I saw and, that. It and was I mentioned awesome. Speedmasters. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, hey, you know, each type of collectible community mm -hmm. oftentimes has their list of like must owns. Yeah. In the watch community, a Speedmaster is often said to be one of the must owns. That's part of the reason why I got it. And yeah. I mean, I, I do like it aesthetically. It's a great watch, but because of that history and and the collectability of it, not that I buy things just for yeah. collection purposes, because I don't, I mean, I buy it because I like it, but it, it speaks to me and that's a Sapphire sandwich. So the back of it, you can, you can see the yeah. actual movement. Right. It's beautiful, it's a manual wine movement. So you right. have to, when we talk manual wine, what we mean is, you have to wind it uh, to start it, and then being a manual wind, it stays wound for however many hours, 50, 60 hours. Yeah, and yeah. then after that, you gotta wind it again. Whereas an automatic watch, and do I have one of my I mean, autos with me? I thought, I yeah, yeah this, this, this is an auto Panerai, and you can see on the back of this, the rotor, and that rotor, as you wearing the watch, yeah. because of the oscillating weight there, it winds the mainspring. Mm -hmm. So once you wind the watch and start it, as long as you're wearing it, yeah. while that movement, it, it winds the mainspring. So yeah. it just keeps the watch wound. So that's like an automatic versus a manual wind watch, right. for example. Right, right, And with the white dial, I gotta admit, the white dial Speedmaster now has my heart. Oh, oh my God, I love yeah. it so much. It's absolutely I love amazing. that thing so much. That could actually win me over like a Daytona. I, yeah. I have to admit, that white dial uh, yeah. Speedmaster is just doing it Oh yeah, they, they did a great formula. job on that, absolutely. Um, okay, why don't we talk about probably the most popular category for the uh, Gun guys, which is divers. Okay. Divers just are, and and I don't even describe it. I mean, di divers are, I mean, maybe the, you know, unless you need to dress up every day. I mean, right. diver is maybe as close as, it, as you can get to a do it all, just sort of like. I think so. And and, and and it's funny because a lot of people are desk divers. <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah, they, yeah. they never wear a diving. Yeah. I'm not a scuba diver, but I love having a diver. Sure. There's um, something oddly satisfying about knowing I could take this thing three three football fields underneath the water and I'm good to go. Right, and, and the thing is, and even with divers, the most iconic diver uh, that people really think about. Oh, and yeah. we talked about the 50 Fathoms earlier, yes. which is actually one of the first as yeah. well, but is the Rolex uh, Samariner. Just classic, I, I mean. 100%. If you, if you were gonna rank most significant watches of all time, yeah. Submariner, at least in the conversation. Oh, oh, a thousand percent, because the Submariner, I mean, it literally visually has not changed hardly at all yeah. since the 1950s. Yeah. So it's essentially the same thing. They just tweak it every so many years to make yeah. it even more perfect. When you think about how many people have knocked that design off. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's the most copied watch in the world. There's no question about Easily. it. Easily. And I mean, it's a great watch, but you, you know, you talk about a diver. I mean, you, you know, the Submariner is one, but then you, you go really extreme, even more extreme, and Rolex does make it too, but look at the thickness of this Breitling. Yeah, this thing, I mean, thing goes ten thousand feet below thing, sea level. Oh, holy shit! Yeah, I mean that thing's—it's a beast. Holy thickness! I mean, and at the time that was that like is insane. The watch that that dove the deepest, essentially. Oh, was it really? It was for, oh, okay. but then someone else came out with about. Well, then Rolex did their the Omega, deep sea the sea dweller, and then yeah, yeah. the Omega, and you know, it's like a race. Who can do it? And none of us are going that damn deep anyway. But it's just kind of cool knowing that it has that rugged capability. Kind of like, let's talk, tie it back to firearms, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people that are into firearms like ourselves, we want something rugged yeah. and durable, a tool, right? Mm -hmm. I want it to work through anything. Yeah. And that's the whole thing with some of these tool watches yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. It's like, hey, do you, you know, <laughs> so even on the gun side, I always tell people, you know, they're talking about, uh, you know, the Glock for the apocalypse and, you know, yeah. an AK and everything. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, how much use is this? It's like the most use this is ever going to get, guys, is 
200 rounds on a range day. <laughs> At best, yeah. a weekend class where you burn down a thousand rounds. Right. But it's like, I get it. You want the durability. You want this bomb proof thing. And so, I get it. Yeah, I'm guilty of it too. You know, oh, yeah. we all are. But it's like, it is comical to, to go, uh, you know, what do you need? A 10, I don't need foot, you need a 10 000 foot watch for. No, you don't. But it's just cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> you it, know, and that's and, enough. And that's fine. And I think that's why a lot of us, into the certain guns that we're into as well, it's the same thing. It's 100%. Like, man. Or cars, and, for example. Yeah. Yeah. I can't legally go over certain speed limits, right? But yeah. it would be nice to have a Lamborghini. Yeah, I would be cool and be able to go 200 miles an hour if I needed to, you right. know, in, in, in something. Um, let's see, what else we got in the uh, diver diver uh, world diver here? Diver world. Oh, well, here. Well, I, mean, I was going to say, we got a lot of Panerai. Panerai, yeah. So um, this is their submersible, yep. Panerai. Um, this this thing's a beast. I absolutely love this watch. This is titanium. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I like the green. I had one until recently. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we talked and about my yeah. exited for the for the Explorer. So, yep. um, they're great. They're great watches. Oh, and, they're awesome. And in probably like certainly in the tier one list of like tough guy watches. Yes, and I've used that comment in my interviews before. Tough guy watches. Exactly. Well, because I mean, the, uh, you know, I, I think Daylight with Stallone is really that's where Panerai really first started coming out of the scene because that of that. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and, and I mean, truly, that was, and, and it seems like there's been like varying reports of how that whole thing actually played out. It's kind of fascinating. Yeah, um, um, but it's like that watch was properly used in that movie. I, I mean, if you were doing oh, yeah. product placement, you're like, you'd be hard pressed to find better product placement than Panerai in Daylight. Oh I mean, yeah, it's no, a thousand incredible. percent, a thousand you know, percent. It's incredible. And then, and then you, you talk about even more history is the PAM 372. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the earlier, uh, this like pays complete homage to uh, originality of the, uh, the dive watch. Now, originally Panerai's, the dive watches were radio mirrors. Yeah. And then um, when they moved to the crown guard to get more depth out of it and stuff like that, yeah. they, they went to basically like this DNA. So this is actually a mechanical watch, a manual wine watch. Oh, no shit. Yeah, notice. so it's not automatic. Um, very simplistic. And what's also very cool about this watch too, and it's very big, but again, being legible underwater, mm -hmm. these straps, this is actually, uh, Micah Dirksen made this from Vintager Straps. What a lot of these Paneristes, Panerai collectors yeah, do, yeah. they get into these custom straps. Yeah, yeah. This is actually made from a World War II ammo pouch. Wow. Yeah, so it's That's really cool. neat. You can get into some really cool stuff with some of these straps. Well, that is very cool. So what they do, a lot of these guys that are into these vintage straps, they'll hunt for vintage, like, military gear, yeah, like yeah. canvas things, um, canvas bags. Wow. I've got a strap made from a canvas bag that was uh, from World War II. Um, and then yeah, these ammo pouches cool. too, which is really neat. I like that a lot. And then you got one more. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. This is more of a dress Pam Panerai. Um, but this, this is the Pam three twenty. Um, so this is a automatic watch. Mm -hmm. It's got a power reserve indicator on the back. And then this is also a GMT watch or a second time zone mm -hmm. watch. So you have a different hand down here that travels. Also, just twelve hours though. So it's a second time zone. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. But you could hide it behind the regular hour hand and not see it if you don't want to, or mm. you could t you know just have another time zone with it. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually. Yeah. So you check it out. No, yeah. that's, I used to have a GMT. It was on, it was on a bracelet from them. Um, mm. And I don't remember it having a 24 scale on it either. Now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I think I don't think they've really done that much. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, that, but but I could be wrong. It's kind of a different style mm -hmm. of uh, uh, an approach to a GMT. Yeah. But they're cool. I, yeah. I, I mean, they're cool yeah. watches. So my, my so my, my last submersible. So we had a trip. We were flying to um, Switzerland to film a B and T, which oh you know, so my god, B and T makes yeah. some great stuff. Great man. stuff, right? So we were flying over there, and um, and we asked them, the B and T reps were like, "Hey, um, we're flying to Zurich," mm -hmm. and we were like, "Hey." Would it be possible to maybe swing by the Panerai boutique? And we didn't know that it hadn't opened yet. Like they oh, hadn't had their grand opening yet. No at, kidding. At the Zurich boutique. Okay, yeah. So we, but it showed that it was open. So we showed up. They let us in. Um, and me and my buddy Chris actually both bought Panerais that day. What was oh cool my about gosh! It? In Zurich. Yeah, in Zurich. How cool! And, oh, and, I love and it. And so what, what? Part of what I I think people don't 
necessarily connect the dots on is like, hey, watches are oftentimes about accumulating memories in those watches. 100%. Right? And so it's like, not only was that cool, but the first damn thing we did in those, we, we drove to Toon, Switzerland, where B&T is, and we jumped off a bridge into a river and we swam down the, this, this Arctic cold river oh in our new Panerai. And you're just like, this is a memory. You know? Oh my hey, gosh, but it's, that's, that's a great story. Yeah, but it's man. like, you'll look down at that yeah. watch, whatever the watch in the story and the history is, and you, and you, and you just remember these moments of life, yeah, you, you know? And it's and it's just cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, what else do we have? How about the turtle here? What are, oh, what the Seiko turtle. That's a great watch too. Um, this, uh, I, I picked up not too long ago. I mean, it's 500 bucks. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? It's but great. Not a great watch, extremely durable. Uh, this is this is a dive watch essentially for them. Um, this is the, the king turtle they call it. Um, it it kind of the design is kind of like from the seventies essentially. Yeah. The way the case is and everything, yeah. uh, it's great. When I saw it, it, it was kind of like a hand grenade dial. It's so cool. The, the, when we talk about dial, we mean the face of the watch. Some mm -hmm. people call it the face, but this, it's called the dial. Um, I love it. Absolutely. It's a cool King watch. Turtle is awesome. And that's the kind of thing that if someone said, hey, I'm starting out, and again, it just depends on your style, your lifestyle, oh, yeah. all, all that kind of stuff. But you go, man, you can do a lot worse in life oh, yeah. than be rocking that bad boy. Oh, yeah. Day. And you can, I mean, you could even, I mean, like, like we talked about, you can get into some of these watches for $100, and, that, and that's really about it. You yeah. Know? And I mean, day, date, um, you know, I mean, that's just badass watch. Yeah. You know, that's badass watch. I'm nice. into it. All right, Jake, here we have the Cabot Insurrection, our first double stack. Mm. Which two watches do you think should be paired with this? Um, I'm going to go back to the well of the Blanc Pond um, 50 Fathoms Bathyscath. Okay, this is the uh, green dial, green bezel, uh, limited edition here. Very, very nice. Um, also on my sort of grail list. And then this is, in essence, a custom Rolex from Blacken, a German company, if I right. remember this right. Um, this is cooled down with liquid nitrogen, mm -hmm. which is insane. Um, that's also how they killed Terminator in Terminator 2. <laughs> just a <laughs> fun fact for everyone. Um, so, vote in the comments who's winning. And the correct answer would be the Blanc Pond. Tell us a little bit about this boy. I mean, Blanc Pond, just classic dive watch. Classic, classic watch, uh, historical company going back to over 175 years ago. We're looking at a bathyscape edition from 50 Fathoms. We have a green bezel, green dial, ceramic case, ceramic bezel, open movement exhibition back mm. with a 72 hour power reserve and a beautiful Kevlar strap. Beautiful. Yep. So Jake, we have here the finest of firearms for the inner city. This is the Mac 11 in nine yes. millimeter, yeah. and it is able to be it's fired not only this way, yes. but this but way, way. And, and giving that 90 degree cant. Yeah. It looks fabulous, and the great thing is, when you turn your hand this way, yeah. you're showing off some wrist. Right. So we need the proper pairings with the Mac 11. So a couple options, you guys will now vote down in the comment. Does the Mac 11 pair better with the Seiko Arnie or the hero of your time by HYT, by HYT MSRP just under 500, MSRP $137,000. Please vote in the comments. Seiko Arnie. Action movie classic, action movie classic. For those of you that voted for the HYT, uh, you're classy, but you're incorrect. The correct answer is the Arnie. Hey y'all, I got the Alchemy Prime Compact mm. DLC, finished with an optic cut, great carry gun. Yeah here for you. Jake, what do you, what do you think in there? Um, I think um, the Blanc Pond Bathyscath would be an excellent choice for that. I also think just for your consideration for the kids at home, mm. um, maybe play around with the Omega Seamaster. This would be the No Time to Die edition, AKA the current James Bond Love watch. It. Love that. Vote for the correct one down in the comments. So the winner actually is the Omega 
Seamaster James Bond edition. This is one of the last James Bond editions they did, and I think the colors match very well. Beautifully. And, uh, you know, the black and then the tan and even a little bit of the gray. I think it's, it's a classic. perfect combination. It's a classic combination of things here. This Absolutely. is maybe the strongest pairing. I, I would agree. agree. I would agree with that. You know, it's kind of a hard use watch, yeah. hard use carry gun. I mean, we're talking daily things here. Yes. And yeah. I think, if anything, James Bond probably should have carried a weapon like this. Right. He would have been more of a man if he did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk GMTs. Um, yeah. GMTs make life real simple, tells two time zones, yep. uh, appeals to travelers. It was like the thrill, like tri flying in into uh, Jersey on this trip from Salt Lake had a two hour time change. I'm like, yes, I do. Let me, <laughs> let me quick adjust this yeah. hour hand. You know, yeah. it's just like uh, this weird, it's this weird thing. Like how often do we use this? Yeah. But somehow it's just awesome and we yeah. love it. Um, yeah. All right, so what, what do we got? Well, let's start with Explorers because we're both Explorers. Yeah, we're I both love Explorer yeah. 2 guys. Yeah, so the Explorer 2, um, originally considered uh, a, a watch, I think it was originally designed for caving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spelunkers, right? yeah. Spelunkers. Yeah. And um, so it does not have a rotating bezel. It's fixed. Right. Yep, yep. But you have that second time zone. Um, mine has the uh, larger orange hand. Yours has yeah. a little bit different. Yeah. Little, little, little what year was guy. yours? So mine's 02. Yours 02. Yeah. Okay, this is... I it's, think it's pretty current. Yeah, no, this yeah. is this is uh, I don't remember what year. The last handful 20, of years, 2015, 2016, yeah. 17, somewhere around okay. there. Yeah, and, and and so this era, um, I think it's. Uh, 15, 6, 70 was the reference. I, ah, I, yeah, I don't even remember reference they, they, numbers they with all that stuff. So, so, you know, yeah. uh, th this era ended in like uh, 2011 and they shifted over to that. So yes, you know, these I were think that's 40 the millimeter, those are 42. But, yeah. you know, I, I've always thought the Explorer 2, um, and by the way, that's a Rolex, everyone. We might have forgotten to say that because oh, we, yeah. we just started going yeah. down Explorer 2 <laughs> path. But it's yeah. like, to me, the Explorer 2 has just always been one of those loves where I love the damn Explorer 2. You know, it's funny because I never liked, well, I wouldn't say never liked. I just didn't really care for Rolex. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't want, I'm never going to get a Rolex. I'm like, Everybody's got a Rolex. I'm not getting a Rolex. Well, my buddy got this one, the yeah. Explorer 2, the newer one. Yeah. And I was like, Oh shit! I actually really like yeah, that. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. And then, and then my buddy was like, because he kept giving me yeah, crap yeah. about it. He was yeah. like, "Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna be a Rolex guy." And so this was actually my first Rolex. Oh, okay. It was it was this one? And and it was like, and I'm like, I'm not getting another one. I don't need another Rolex. I don't care. Well, and I here dove down. Yeah, there. I see at least three over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, but no, the Explorer Two is great. Second time zone function is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's great for travelers. Um, me being the nerd that I am with uh, things, I'm also a ham radio operator. Mm. So I don't know if you're familiar with ham radio. A lot of people uh, might I, not. I know what it is. I, old I school, don't participate. Old, old but, yeah. school uh, communications. Yeah. I mean, uh, some people are, were still, and actually still do the uh, Morse code. I'm, I'm not versed in Morse code, but uh, ham operators generally go off of the GMT mm. time zone. Yeah, yeah. So I was kind of like, oh, it's kind of cool to know if I'm doing radio ops or whatever. Sure. That, I'm, I know what that time zone is if I'm documenting my uh, my contacts and yeah. stuff. So yeah, that was that was kind of my first like nice GMT, if yeah. you will. And then we've got kind of the oh the Mac Daddy GMT. There. Yeah, yeah, I got this. This was kind of like my 50th birthday to myself. Um, yeah, the, uh, the the Rolex Explorer Two. Um, and on this guy, or a GMT it, Master Two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. I am. Yeah. Or an Explorer. We're, yeah, this yeah. was the Explorer yeah. Two, the GMT Master Two. Yeah, um, and I love it. And, and what's great about this is it you do have the ability to rotate that bezel, so you can change the time zone that way easily. Yeah. Or essentially get a couple of different time zones out of it. So. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know the 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 GMT is a complication. I mean, I would say. Chronos, there's so many great options. Oh, yeah, we'll Divers, there's too, a yeah. million. Yeah. When it comes to GMTs, yes, there's a lot of great options. But when yeah. you think of the Hallmark GMT movement watches, it's that. Yeah, it's that. Oh yeah, there's like, no question. It, it's no, simply right. that. Like, and there's really, I don't, I don't even think anyone debated it. You know, yeah, it's, no, I agree. it's just like that's it. And the damn Jubilee bracelet, it just has my heart. And that's what. That's the only reason why I went for it. Because I don't like the other bracelet. I when yeah. I saw that on that Jubilee, I was like, okay, now I'm ready. I'll do yeah. it. Yeah, it, it it absolutely does it for me. It, it, and for those of you again not well versed in in 
Rolexes and GMTs and everything, you know, there's the Pepsi, you know, this would mm-hmm. be more, uh, you know, referred to as the Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, you and know, and that's the color of the bezel. Yeah. So like yeah, the Pepsi the, the, is the red and blue. and blue. This is black and blue. So yeah. it's considered the Batman. Um, it's as clean as it gets. Um, yeah. that, that for me, and I actually prefer the Batman nice. over Pepsi personally. Me um, too. That's just me. Me too. And, and for me, it was kind of like, it's kind of closer to law enforcement colors. Yeah. So I was kind of like, I like the black and blue, but yeah. you don't have to spend the money on one of these to get a similar look. Yeah. With a good old Seiko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And I have the Seiko. I love it. And it's all so similar. This is like the poor man's Batman, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it. Um, the bezel does not click. Yeah. Um, but you have an inner chapter ring or, 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 uh, for 24 hours and the outer one. Yeah. Um, it's extremely legible. And you're talking like 500 bucks. Yeah. So it's a great, it's a oh, great watch. Yeah. I mean... Well, and, and for people going like, hey, I, I think I'd like to kind of dabble in this. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I want to go full send yet. It's like, yeah. again, Seiko becomes a very uh, fantastic starting Seiko, place. Seiko, Citizen, um, you can get into some of the, you know, um, other Swiss brands that don't even cost that much, like Longines. Uh, Longines makes some great stuff. Longines makes great makes stuff. Great Hamilton, stuff. Um, Tissot. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff Tons. out there that you don't have to spend tons of money on and really get some cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Why don't we cap it off on uh, Kronos? Because we got a lot of Kronos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I love Kronos. Yeah, you're yeah. clearly a Chrono guy. <clears throat> um, all right. Kick it off. What do you got? Oh, um, let's see. So, well, we'll go with uh, one of my uh, really rugged Kronos. Yeah. And this is Breitling. I love Breitling. Mm-hmm. I have several Breitlings. This, when this came out with that green dial, um, I put this green NATO strap on it, so it's it's a little different. This is actually made by Triple Aught Design Tag. Yeah, and I Here. had no idea they made watch straps right oh. prior to sitting down. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I, I thought it was really cool, but it's a great chronograph. I've never had like a really you know luxury brand uh, yeah. black watch. So when that came out, it really spoke to me, and I was like, okay. So I've worn this on a range quite a bit, uh, training, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's taking a beating, outdoors, camping, things like that. That. Great it's a piece. Great watch. Great piece. And yeah. very lifestyle, just appropriate. Again, yeah. matching the, the man to the watch. It's like that, yeah. you know, that, that screams like, yeah, that's something you'd be into. Right. You know? And that's the thing. And you can yeah. see through my collection, most of it is literally more tool watches than anything. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the, the, the dressiest watch I have here, and then we'll go back to the Chronos, is um, my Vacheron mm-hmm. um, dual time here. Which uh, you know, this is this is like higher higher yeah, level oh, yeah. luxury. Oh yeah. Um, I have a bespoke strap, meaning it's a completely custom made strap. Strap. I, I worked with it. Yeah. The, uh, the worked with the company Jean Russo. Did the strap for it. I did a multi or not a multi cam, but a camouflage gray yeah. gray pattern on the back, which is really fun. And then the uh, crocodile brown on the front. Uh, so yeah, and then my initials a etched gorgeous in the back. Piece. A gorgeous piece. Yeah, man. yeah, and again, and that's also a second time zone. This has another time zone. Yeah, it's just in a different fashion, but um, mm-hmm. yeah. AM PM indicator. Yeah, it fooled me at, at first. I was like, man, where's the GMT mm-hmm. on this? Yep. Um, so it kind of goes back cool. to some of that tool stuff, yet still dressy. But yeah. going back to the Chronos, um, another Breitling, for example, that I love, and this is one of my all-time favorite. I, I call this my my favorite travel watch. Mm-hmm. And this is the Breitling Chronomat 44 GMT. So it's a 44 millimeter. You have a GMT function and a chronograph, mm-hmm. which to me I love because now I've got several things that I can do with this. Got a lot. Uh, yeah. The rotating bezel is also on a 24 hour scale, mm. as well as the inner chapter that, that is 24 hours too. So essentially you can easily do three different time zones with this watch and you've got that chronograph function. The other thing, we'll tie it into dive watches for a moment. These are screw down crowns. Right. So yeah. because of the screw down crowns, it is more, it has a higher depth rating. Yeah, yeah, you still get some water resistance. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and screw down crowns one of those things like hey, the the water uh, resistance that's part of you know the big part of that equation is yep. is being able to screw down the crown versus you know mm-hmm. push it in and hope for the best. Yep. Um, yeah, you can basically do everything in that. Yes, I love I mean, it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it might not be your 
suit and tie watch necessarily, but aside from that, but you could. Like, but to me, you, you could, could get away you with could. that. You because, could. And again, and that to me, because and that's why I got it high polished. Mm. But then sometimes I wish I wouldn't have gotten it high polished and just a, like a standard stainless steel or, or brushed look, because then to me I would probably wear it more in the field more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, because it's a little dressier in that way. Another chrono that I that I love uh, the IWC Spitfire chronograph, yeah. and I noticed. You've got yeah, an yeah, IWC yeah, as well. Yeah, not the Spitfire, but so I, I, I love. Lo I, so I, I, I love IWC as a brand. Oh, um, they're great! It's the best customer service experience I've ever had in my entire life. Really um, incredible. Where'd they, you buy it at? What like what the state? London boutique? In London, yeah. really? Yeah. Um, they oh, sent me a message the, yeah. the other <laughs> the other day, <laughs> and. Um, and they sent me like the thumbnail image of a video that we did a couple weeks ago. And they were like, glad to see you're enjoying the, the watch. Yeah. And, and they were like watching the, 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 the video. And I was like, man, you guys That's are like really paying cool. attention to this? That's like, awesome, man. Good like, for this you. This is insane. Um, incredible uh, customer experience. Best thing I've ever seen. I mean, they're like, wow, man, you, you guys rolled out. I mean, they, they figured out what I like to drink and had it ready when I would come. And I was oh, like, oh, man, now shit. that's an experience. I was like, man, you, you guys are good. Like, well, you guys and, are and that's really it. You get a good AD, you know, just like, you know, like here we're sitting at Geneva Seal. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. This is what they do. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Taking care of their customers, making it a good experience. Yeah. And they were kind enough to have us here. Totally. Which is great. But I mean, essentially, this it's the same movement, right? It yeah. is the exact same movement in the watch, yeah. just a different case design and uh, in dial work, but it's essentially the same damn thing. Yeah, it, it, so and beautiful. I, mean, I love in it. In the world, you know, and, and Pilot's watch, I, I think, is is one of those very yeah. sort of um, ambiguous terms where you're like. What is it that a pilot wants to do? Yeah, it needs a time thing, but sure. it needs to be very legible. Mm -hmm. So what is it? Is it as a chrono? But I could use a yeah. rotating bezel to time things. You know, right, like, exactly. So pilots is, is very vague, but I mean, mm -hmm. within the world of pilot watches, IWC is a very obvious one or two, you know, sort of top oh, tier sure. contender. Oh, in absolutely. That space, well, and a lot of people, we think of Breitling yeah. because Breitling did design, they were the first to actually use the uh, slide rule that's mm -hmm. used for pilots mm -hmm. before computers and all that stuff to be able to time their, uh, you know, rate of ascent, rate of descent, fuel consumption, things like that. And that's what's on a Breitling Pilot Watch, for example. Yeah. And then they've even done it, like I have this on one of my classics. This is an old Citizen that mm -hmm. I got a yeah. long time ago. My late wife got for me as, as a Christmas gift and surprised me with it. Uh, this Citizen it has all the different time zones in it. You literally click through and it'll tell you the different yeah. time zones. It's the Blue Angels. So Not cool. that I'm a pilot, but man, I like pilot watches. Different time zones and different alarms, chronograph, stopwatch. I love it. And, and when we think IWC, the other one, is what's it called? The big pilot. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, when we think of the amazing. big pilot and I don't have one, yeah. but I mean, it's a very large watch. Yeah. So you yeah. can see the legibility and everything so with it legible. and all. And a huge crown. And that crown was designed because the pilots back then were with, with uh, yeah, the gloves, gloves yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. I mean, you're talking a long time ago. I mean, yeah, like yeah, yeah. early aviation. Yeah, no, really cool stuff. Yeah. All right, well, I think that might be a good time to Let's start pairing some watches with like guns. That. Yes. And one more thank you to the fellas over at Big Tech's Ordnance. Now, I happen to know that they are watch guys, um, and I think that's kind of cool. The first time we met at the uh, at one of the, the gun shows, I was like, hey, what do you got going over there? And we were like kind of bonding over mutual love of watches. So they like nice gear, not just watches, but they like nice gear ranging from uh, optics and accessories and lights and all kinds of cool things that you can trick out all your 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 kit and caboodle with um so check that out uh super fast shipping actually goes out same day if you place the order before 2 p.m central standard time which is what the texans uh, call their time zone um and they send you candy in your order you get a copy of the constitution everything's in stock if they say it's in stock a lot of perks um you guys can pl plug in the code 1911 sin that is s y n not s i n as you might imagine given it's me behind the camera here. Um, plug that in and it'll save you 10% off the store. Last thing, if you guys need real estate help, let us know, 1911syndicate.com. Um, you can reach out to us through the site. We work in a few different cities, ranging from Salt Lake to Vegas to Dallas to Colorado Springs and a handful of others. Final thing, Patreon's linked below if you guys want special behind the scenes content. Um, 
we do giveaways, there's special merch. We've got a private class later this year with HK and James Williamson and all kinds of fun, wild things that are gonna happen at that. So much appreciated, back on with the show. Greg, welcome to the lightning round. Oh boy, okay, so you didn't <laughs> now you're frightening coming. me. Yeah, no one, no one knows this is coming. Oh boy. So it's three very simple questions, right? Oh boy. But you can't take an eternity to think of the answer to them. You just have to go with your gut, okay? okay. First one's reasonably simple in an odd sense. What's one of your grail watches? Mm. It's gonna be some sort of a uh, perpetual calendar with a minute repeater probably. Okay. And I mean, now you're talking like a Patek. Okay. Probably a Patek Philippe. Okay. Uh, I can't think of the reference number right now, but yeah, it's probably yeah. that. It's going to be a pricey day. Yeah. 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 Okay. Going in the other direction. Um, Shaquille O'Neal wears an Invicta, um, which means you know it's nice. Okay. So how much to wear only Invicta watches for the rest of your life? What's your price? What do we got to pay you to wear only Invictus moving forward? Let's see, my kids gotta get through college. Right, we got that, that's six um, figures. I want yep. uh, to make sure they have their own houses, because sure. this is all about them. I wanna make sure my kids are taken care right. of, because if I'm gonna go down that path. Yeah, you need a couple the, guns to celebrate. Oh yeah, well definitely lots of firearms. Yeah. Actually machine guns. Yeah, well and those aren't cheap. Yeah, and we probably have to be in a different state for that, unfortunately. Yeah. We can yeah. work on that. But I know my son wants a couple of certain machine guns too, so I'll probably make sure that he's taken care of in that way. Okay. And whatever my daughter wants. What's your price? Hundred million. Hundred million to wear only Invictus. I think it's it's a little conservative. I think you're really gonna taking the taking the governor off that thing and open it up. Well, I'm thinking I'm thinking how many machine guns we can get for that too, because that's very important. A healthy amount. <laughs> a healthy amount. And uh, and a few watches. Yeah, MP5 SD, no problem yes. on that budget. Okay, this one's tricky, and I hate the question, but I'm gonna pose it to you. Oh boy. The apocalypse breaks out, and you can only take one watch with you to get through the apocalypse. What do we take? Oh. You came up with a hundred million dollars faster than this. It's, it's, it's going to be this bright line. I was hoping you were going to go that it direction. It was going to be. It's, it's the versatility. Be the versatility. I, I almost went over the Rolex because of the durability and everything. But yeah. the chronograph, the second time zone, it's mechanical. Yeah, it, it would have to be that. Yeah. Man, that's a good question. It's a tough question. The watch you would wear for the apocalypse. Yeah, and you only yeah. One what, are you, what are you just going to lay it down in the apocalypse with? Yeah, Breitling. Now, granted, the 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 more and sketchy guys wear Breitling. That the more and I'm a the part high, of the sketchy boys watch club. The high so. polish could come back to bite you in the ass there, but you know, well, that, you know, by then it'll be beat up. Yeah, that is what it is because it'll be the apocalypse. Um, well, I guess we'll wrap it up on uh, on 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 this. You know, guys, you're seeing a lot of cool watches, a lot of fancy stuff. I get that, but um, don't let it steer you in terms of what you like and what you do. It's like, hey, look, buy within your means, buy stuff that speaks to you. Like it, it doesn't need to be a Rolex. It doesn't need to be a Breitling, whatever it is. Like it can be a Seiko, it can be a G-Shock. Like just just have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Don't place pressure on yeah. yourself. Yeah. So any anything to leave people with? No, um, I tell whatever you're, if you're into watches, as much as you're into guns or you're getting into watches, um, you don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't, you really don't. You could start out and spend a few hundred dollars and getting into it. You don't have to have, you know, the Rolex and all this other stuff. I mean, these Seikos are outstanding, awesome. extremely durable, great watches. Um, but you can journey down that path where you're spending more. Um, and it's just, it's a pleasure. It's just, just like with guns, right? You start out with some you know, less expensive guns. And as you can afford more and you see the quality change in, in terms of, you know, well-made firearms. Yeah, it gets uh, crazy. Alchemy, Cabot, things yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Now you know, we're yeah. talking, okay, now we're talking some high-end stuff. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Well, man, thanks for coming out and doing this. Like, this is Absolutely. really fun. Yeah, I know we've been wanting to do you. it for a while. Yeah. So this Thank is you very cool. Much. Um, you guys give Greg, uh, uh, tell your uh, Instagram. Instagram uh, Greg Watchman on Instagram. So yeah, yeah. just check that out. Yeah, Thank super you. cool. And Appreciate thanks to it. Geneva Seal for letting us come in. Yeah, Geneva Seal is great. Ra raid your space. If you're in Chicago, definitely swing by and check yep. it out. And, Thank you. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys soon. All right, take care.